Where do we begin with this story? We have a family at war, a suspicious death, and a controversial forbidden romance. One shot to the back of the head. But was it a suicide or something else? We believe she murdered him. And we believe she murdered him in cold blood. Shocking accusations. A forbidden love. A forbidden love, absolutely. Salacious rumors. I would like to think that's not true. All leading to one unbelievable bombshell. Your husband was your uncle. Yeah, a lot going on there. Apple Orchard owner Tim McNamara, known simply as Mac to his friends and family, is rolling in the red and delicious and millions on his lucrative apple farm in Soap Lake, Washington. So what would you say is a ballpark estimate of his estate? Between 1.7 and $2 million. By most standards, Tim McNamara is successful and appears to have the perfect all-American family with his wife, Vicki, and two children, Caleb and Jennifer. Mac was, you know, a very well-known person in this community, very well thought of. But on the other side of town lived Tracy Nessel. She enjoyed a more modest existence, a far cry from the life of the well-to-do McNamaras. I would see Tim McNamara on occasion in town. Uh, Caleb McNamara, Jennifer. Tracy came from a broken family and grew up without a father figure. She confesses she admired the McNamara family from afar, even wishing she was one of them. How would you describe the McNamara family as you were growing up? I didn't know growing up who they were, what they were like. Did you want to know who they were? Yes. Yes. Because there was always that self-seeking identity I had this identity crisis of who I belong to. It's like a child that's been adopted. Who are my parents? Tracy would continue to wonder about her roots when at 17 years old, she moved far away from the small town chatter to North Carolina and a fresh start. Tracy eventually gets married and starts a family of her own. And the McNamaras and her life in Soap Lake are a distant memory. Then, oddly enough, one day, Tracy receives a wedding invitation. Tim McNamara's daughter is getting married. Tim McNamara invited me to the wedding. He thought it would be a great idea for me to come out. And love was in the air. It was just energy. There was just this connection that's really hard to describe. And not just between the bride and the groom. I remember having these feelings for Tim, and vice versa. He expressed that he did it as well. What do you mean by feelings for Tim? Um, physical attraction. You were sexually attracted to him. Physically attracted to him. But any sort of love connection will have to wait. Tim is going through a divorce, and Tracy is in a relationship back home in North Carolina. But when Tracy's relationship ends and Tim's divorce is nearly finalized, Tracy returns to Soap Lake and those untapped passions. It was a physical attraction. But it was more, we were spiritually connected, we were solely connected, and he was a dad, he was my best friend, he was my lover, he was, he was everything in one. Everything? According to the rumors around town, that may have meant more than most people were comfortable with. They say my biological father is Denny McNamara. Who is Tim McNamara's brother? That's right, it seemed Tracy's new lover, Tim, was Uncle Tim. And yet Tracy makes the decision to continue the incestuous relationship. How would you describe the relationship between Tracy and Tim? A big hot mess. And more entangled by the day. Apparently, just months after dating, Tim transfers all of his property into Tracy's name, including the apple orchard, his home on the farm, and two additional parcels of land nearby. Tim was concerned that his children would sell the farm, and he wanted to keep the farm intact as a McNamara farm. And biologically, Tracy was a McNamara, but according to her, she was definitely not a welcome addition to the family. No longer feeling accepted by his family or friends in Soap Lake, Uncle Tim and Tracy decide to take their forbidden love 
to Belize. The real reason they went to Belize is because the whole community here had turned against Tim uh, and Tracy, but I think more against Tim because Tim would do such a thing. Once in Belize, Tim buys a 50-acre farm north of Belize City where they plan to open a bed and breakfast. He also puts Tracy's name on the deed. And it was our opportunity to go live our life and um, live it out, hoping that everyone would come around. In Belize, Tim and Tracy are free of judgment and free, it seemed, to be together as husband and wife. Less than a year after moving to Belize, Tim and Tracy are exchanging vows. Tracy recalls her ceremony. So when I came out, he was like, oh my God, he started crying. It was beautiful. That doesn't make me cry. It was beautiful. Taboo as it was, Tracy says they were in love. Tim had even written a will leaving everything to Tracy. The will is very, very clear. It's very beautifully written. It explains to his friends and family why he's leaving things to Tracy. Uh, and, and not to his children. Exactly. The will reads in part, when I die, I wish to leave all I own to my partner, Tracy Nestle McNamara, all life insurance and personal property and real estate I leave to her. But after two years in Belize, how much is there really? We were broke. We were logging illegally on our property to get money. The forestry department was coming down on us. We had a week to get open for our bed and breakfast to get guests in there. Money pressures and perhaps something else was weighing heavily on Tim's mind. Ends up he couldn't escape the Soap Lake soap opera after all, even halfway around the world in Belize. This time, it's a shocking accusation of molestation, and it's coming from his granddaughter. And that was very painful to him. Very painful. As seen in this email exchange between Tim and his granddaughter, Tim writes, I never molested you, never looked at you in a bad way, nor had a sick thought of you or anyone else. His granddaughter responds, you're the adult here, so don't blame anything on me. I've done nothing wrong. It's not long after this, just a few weeks before Christmas, that Tim begins reaching out to his kids via email in an apparent attempt to make amends. He had come into the house while I was at the bed and breakfast working, unbeknownst to me, and wrote emails to his children. Very uncharacteristic of him. Tim and his children had become increasingly distant because of his incestuous relationship and the fact that he cut them out of the inheritance. But by the time Christmas rolls around, it seems maybe Tim is feeling sentimental, reaching out to his son Caleb with these now haunting words. I sure have loved being your dad. This would be Tim's final email. Moments after hitting send, Tim steps out on the patio. It wasn't uncommon for Mac to go out and fire a shot to scare off whoever was there, potentially, or an animal. Then Tracy says she was in the kitchen making dinner when she heard the loud pop of a gunshot. But I didn't check on him right away because I didn't think anything of it. It was just clumming. And then, um, then I, I checked on him. And he was laying there on his side. Tim's been shot in the back of the head. So I just started screaming, help me, help me, help me. Somebody please help me. Mac's been shot or Mac, Mac has shot himself. I don't even remember what I said. But is that really what happened? He didn't kill himself. That's our position. What do you think happened then? We think she shot him. That's what we've alleged. Tim McNamara, an apple farmer from Eastern Washington, has been shot in the back of the head. But who did it? As he lays bleeding on the porch outside his Belizean home, he's cradled by his wife, who also just happens to be his niece, Tracy Nessel McNamara. And I said, Mac, get up. And um, he didn't get up. And I went and I kind of maybe moved him, Mac, yeah, come on, but I never saw blood, I didn't see anything, so I still didn't know really what was going on at this point. And so I screamed for a long time. 
a very long time. It will be nearly three hours before an ambulance arrives, and not because of traffic. You had a phone in the house? We had a landline. But you didn't dial 911? No, I didn't think about it. I didn't know. And during all that time, Tim McNamara is alive, but just barely. I got a blanket because it was raining. And I laid with him. I laid with him. I smooned with him. I laid on top of him. By the time paramedics arrive, it is most likely already too late to save him. Tim later dies in the hospital around 11.30 that night, a full five and a half hours after when police reports say he was shot. Why didn't you call emergency right away? Because I didn't know what to do in that country. Soon after Tim is pronounced dead, Tracy reaches out to his son Caleb to give him the news. He texts back and said, did dad kill himself? And I said, I don't know why he would do something like that, because again, at this time, I don't know what happened. I have no idea what happened. Did he fall? Was it an accident? Was there someone else out there? Was it me? Caleb is on the next flight out. He went to the morgue. We both went to the morgue to identify the body. The following day, police in Belize bring Tracy in to ask a few questions about the tragedy. Did you feel like you were a suspect then? No. Tracy says she told them she believes Tim most likely took his own life over money concerns and personal trouble related to the family drama, and her attorney agrees. All the evidence points to suicide, all of it. No question about it. But police in Belize also question Caleb. I don't know what conversations transpired in Belize with Caleb and the officials. But they don't appear to be favorable to Tracy. And Caleb said, I highly recommend that you leave Belize now. Advice Tracy readily accepts. She quickly catches a flight back to Soap Lake, Washington. And two weeks later, Belizean officials release their forensics report. And that's where it changed. Then I became a suspect. The National Forensic Science Service Ministry of report is damning for Tracy. First, it claims there was blood spatter on Tracy's shirt. Second, it states there was no gunshot residue or blood present on the victim's hands. Third, it finds that based on the bullet's trajectory, the person who fired the shot was shorter in height and standing behind him. The conclusion, all right there in black and white. He was not the one who fired the shot, causing the wound. But Tracy's attorney is quick to discredit the report. What's on Tracy's shirt is transfer. It's not spatter, it's not blowback. And then he makes a big deal out of the fact that Tim, there was no blood on Tim's hand. Tim was laying in the rain. Tracy was desperate, couldn't get anybody to come for almost three hours. He's in the pouring Belize rain for three hours. You expect there's supposed to be blood on his hand? But what about the report's findings that make it seem impossible that Tim could have shot himself? If you shoot yourself here and you turn your head this way, the path of the wound would be totally consistent. It doesn't prove homicide by any stretch of the imagination. Rebuttal? I don't want to laugh on national TV, but that is not my understanding of what happened. In fact, we have made a paper gun in here, cardboard gun, and we've been trying to, we've been trying to shoot ourselves the way that he would have had to shoot himself in order for it to enter and exit the way it did. We can't contort ourselves quite enough to make it happen. So who shot Tim McNamara? We allege that Tracy Nestle did. After reviewing the forensics report, Tim's children, Caleb and Jennifer, are convinced Tim was killed and that Tracy did it. Soon after, they hire attorney Karen Kohler to help build a case. The motivation was financial. That's our allegation. According to Washington State property records, Tim transferred over all of his properties in Soap Lake, Washington to Tracy. That includes his apple orchard, farmhouse, and two additional nearby parcels of land. A man who his entire life was building a legacy for his children and within the matter of the months gave away literally a couple million dollars of all of his assets to, to this person. 
And over the course of the next two years, the McNamara children claim Tracy rendered their millionaire father penniless. He completely lost his financial security in that period of time. But while Tim may have been broke, Tracy was not. After his death, it's uncovered that there are two life insurance policies worth almost a half a million dollars, all in Tracy's name. From the time she entered his life, his life took a complete turn for the worst. And then he dies in a way that is not consistent with suicide. Reinforcing that conclusion are reports later gathered from Tim's longtime friends, including this statement from childhood pal Dale Pixley. To be clear, Tim never expressed any wish or intent to kill himself or any thoughts of ending his life. As for those depressed emails to his kids, which may have suggested a suicidal state of mind. Did you interpret at all those emails between um, Tim and his children where he said, you know, I've really enjoyed being your father. I've always loved being your father, as if that was a goodbye note. Do you read it no. that way? I could pull you up hundreds of things I've written to my kids like that. But still, Tracy maintains Tim must have killed himself, and she says it's not like he didn't have some very serious issues weighing on his mind. Including this stunning claim apparently made by Tracy's own mother. That Tim had molested me as a child. That's right, Tracy's own mom has accused Tim of abusing her when she was just a young girl. But I have no recollection of that, nor do I believe that that ever occurred. However, it wouldn't be the only time Tim was accused of such offenses. Let's not forget the allegation made by his own granddaughter shortly before he died. There are allegations against Tim McNamara that he allegedly sexually molested some younger members of his family, right. nieces, right. granddaughters, and that's one of the reasons he may have wanted to kill himself. Is there any truth to this? No. But if Tim didn't do it, why in the world would Tracy's mother make such an accusation? Was there anyone else who had had a relationship with Mac that is close to you? No. Oh, my mother. Younger. Your... They were younger. Mm -hmm. They grew up in the same community in Soap Lake. So your mom had a relationship I don't know what kind of a relationship. Maybe they were boyfriend-girlfriend, I don't yeah. know. And you're absolutely sure he didn't molest you as a child? I don't absolutely know anything, if he did or he didn't. But that isn't something that you worry about? Well, um, if it happened to me as a child and I don't remember, it hasn't affected me. But Tracy's own attorney isn't so sure. He believes she was in some sort of emotionally abusive relationship when it came to Tim. I would like to think that's not true, that Tim didn't molest Tracy, but I think Tracy's mother is very wise, very wise. Uh, and mothers know more than daughters. Caleb and Jennifer's attorney calls these latest molestation claims a distraction from the fact that Tracy murdered Tim and now the children have filed a wrongful death suit against her. We believe that she unduly influenced him. She gained control of all of his assets, convinced him to make her beneficiary on all of his life insurance, and then we believe that she killed him. Millionaire apple orchard owner Tim McNamara has been shot to death. Execution style at his home in Belize, if you believe his children. They claim his new bride, Tracy McNamara, who also happens to be his niece, killed their father, and the Belizean forensics report supports that theory. The evidence is so compelling that Tim's kids file a wrongful death lawsuit. It's a big, hot mess that ended in murder. That's our feeling, and it's our strong feeling. But is this lawsuit based on a case of cold-blooded murder? or hot and heavy heartbreak. On the night that Tim McNamara died, his son Caleb took the first flight out to Belize and stayed with Tracy. Tracy, who is his 
first cousin and stepmom, if you're keeping track. Caleb stayed with me the very first night at our home. What do you mean? He stayed with me one night. After? Mac died. And that night, you and Caleb had sex? We took a shower. We were involved. Through his attorney, Caleb denies having sex with Tracy in Belize. His attorney went on to say this. She believes that she can say whatever she wants to say and that we won't say anything back. I can say she's a pathological liar because that's what we said in our complaint and that's our position. That's my client's position. She's a pathological liar. And as if things couldn't get any more outrageous, Tracy says this was no one night stand. According to her, she and Caleb had been carrying on an illicit affair for years. Tell me about your relationship with Caleb. That relationship, if you want to call it a relationship or a sexual relationship, with Caleb began in 1999. How long did you have a relationship with Caleb? Well, being as I lived in North Carolina, I came back for the summers and up until 2012. So. And even in Belize, the day he came. That means Tracy was with Tim for two years and Caleb for a whopping 13. And how does Tracy justify her sexapade? Forget for a moment that Caleb and Tracy are related. That's scandalous enough. But her husband, Uncle Tim, has been dead less than 24 hours. That is so complicated, Tracy. Very difficult because, you know, where is the respect? Where is the loyalty? Where is the... I don't know what I was thinking. I don't... I really don't. Was, was his absent scary for me and that I just needed that comfort, like Caleb was there to, to take Mac's place? I don't know. It was wrong. Can't change time. Time or this incestuous love triangle? It appears confusing because Caleb was your cousin and then you married his father, which made him your stepson. <laughs> but your husband was your uncle. Yeah, a lot going on there. A lot of terms, yes. When we asked for comment about a long-term sexual relationship, Caleb's attorney responded, quote, Caleb denies they had sex in Belize. But Tracy said Tim knew about it and it ate him up inside. Mac had nightmares about his son. That taunted him a lot. What, that you had slept with him? Yeah. And what does the McNamara family attorney think about her client Caleb allegedly sleeping with the defendant Tracy after she supposedly just murdered his dad? Oh, I just want to stick my, my finger down my throat and throw up, you know? I'm having to listen to this crap. She's the one that's supposed to be devastated and she's having shower sex with his, with his son less than, what, 24 hours after he dies? Yeah. But are Tracy's actions that of a murderer or a lonely, grieving widow? And is she even a widow? So that brings me back to another question. Is there a legal marriage between Tracy and Tim? No. Why is it not a legal marriage? Because you marriage? can't marry a person of one degree separation in Belize. Wife, niece, cousin, stepmom, murderer? Whoever Tracy Nestle McNamara is, Belizean police want to chat with her and issue a warrant for her arrest. Or do they? Mr. Uh, Brown apparently doesn't like the fact that I called it an Interpol warrant versus an, in, versus an Interpol posted warrant. What's the distinction here? There's no distinction. Tracy's attorney says there isn't an Interpol warrant for his client, and he's filed a defamation lawsuit against attorney Karen Kohler and her firm for posting this information on their website. If you uh, have just cause to believe that somebody's involved in a crime, you, Interpol will post what they call a red notice, which is not a warrant, uh, it's just an alert to other countries that another country is looking for somebody. So then do we know for sure that Belize is looking for Tracy? According to Interpol, yes. Whatever you want to call it, Tracy cannot travel freely. 
She's stuck in Soap Lake, Washington for now. And while both sides await the pending civil lawsuit, all of Tim McNamara's assets are frozen. This includes his properties in Washington, Belize, and both life insurance policies. But according to the McNamara family attorney, that makes no difference to Tim's kids. Her attorney says that the reason Jennifer and Caleb are suing her is because they are hurt and upset because they were left out of the will. They're suing her because they believe that she murdered their father. But no matter who is the rightful heir to the McNamara estate, the facts remain that Tim McNamara is dead and his children and lover are as entangled as the apple tree branches on his Soap Lake, Washington farm. I love this farm because every day I'm out in this farm, it doesn't matter where I am, he's there. He's there with me. Tracy still maintains that Tim killed himself. Ultimately, it will be up to a court to decide. Either way, she may have finally gotten what she wanted, an identity. She now has taken on the McNamara name, even though she was not legally married to this man. She's become a McNamara, which probably she's always wanted to be. There's probably truth to that. There and probably I think is. Wanting and desiring to be a McNamara. She made it happen. Kudos to her.